freedom, independence and equality, tackling the big issues. Now, the big issues are as prevalent in historical fiction as they are in our own day um, and raise passionate convictions in many ways and in many debates. Also, quite frequently, historical fictions affect uh, and might even influence reader opinions in our own time, whether this is valid or wise or not. Ladies and gentlemen, Douglas Jack. First of all, I'll ask the panel to introduce themselves, beginning with Elizabeth. Oh, I'm Elizabeth Fremantle. I write uh, 16th century set novels. Uh, first novel, Queen's Gambit, is about Catherine Parr, and I've got another one out at the moment about uh, the Grey, the two younger sisters of Lady Jane Grey, uh, sisters of treason. And I've just delivered the, the third in the Tudor trilogy which is about Penelope Deverick, sister of the Earl of Essex. I'm Emma Darwin. Um, I can never answer the when, what period do you write because my first novel, The Mathematics of Love, was half set in 1819 and half set in 1976. And that, that was a, a, a painfully wide straddle, so I made it worse next because my second novel, A Secret Alchemy, was half set in The Wars of the Roses and half set in 1995. <laughs> um, so I can never answer that question. Um, maybe more relevant here is that I'm just at the moment uh, working on a book for Hodder as part of their Teach Yourself Creative Writing series, which is Get Started in Writing Historical Fiction. My name is Margaret George, and I have written six novels that span from 1200 BC uh, the last, uh, through the Elizabethan era. I do have three Tudor era ones, um, one about Elizabeth I, one about Henry VIII, and another about Mary Queen of Scots but I also have done one about Helen of Troy, Cleopatra, and Mary Magdalene. I'm Robin Young. Um, I finished the, the first in what would become the Brethren Trilogy, which um, were about the Knights Templar on the eve of the Crusades, or the eve of the last Crusades. Um, and from that springboarded, quite naturally, um, my Insurrection Trilogy, which is about um, Robert Bruce, essentially, and the Wars of Independence, which might have some vague topicality <laughs> going on today. <laughs> My name's Andrew Taylor. I began as a, as a contemporary crime novelist. I'm still really a crime <laughs> novelist, but in the last sort of 10 or 15 years of writing, I, I've wandered increasingly into the past. Um, I've set a series in the 1950s. Um, I've set one-off novels in the 1930s and the Regency period. And my last three novels have been set in the 18th century. As writers, we all write about different eras and from different perspectives. Do you think that freedom, independence and, and equality as concepts have different interpretations in different eras? And if so, how do they manifest themselves in your own era? Elizabeth I, she wasn't free. She had no freedom. She was limited firstly by her gender and this, this decision, this sort of prolonged decision not to marry. You know, it, that, that is kind of symbolic in some way of what all women's lives were. And she was less free than other monarchs because she was female. And I think Mary Tudor is another example of that. That women's lives were small, they were they were not expected to engage with the, the big issues. Those were man's, man's, men's things for men to deal with. They, there was no notion of equality for women. They didn't even strive for it. It wasn't until centuries later that women kind of got together and they thought, should we, should we have equality with men? It was, it was apparently the word of God that women weren't equal, and that was accepted. I mean, it is a problem if you want women as your protagonist. My second novel, A Secret Alchemy, which is, it's, it's all about marriage, and that, you know, sadly that sounds boring, but, but I, it's, 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 it's about how these partnerships work, and I think one, one thing you have to think is that the, the real human drive for most of us is to survive within the milieu we're in. You know, it not only is historically unconvincing to turn every, every 15th century woman into a feminist and every 15th century man you want the reader to like into a feminist while we're at it, but it's also not terribly interesting because actually what most of us do most of the time is try and find the place between the conventions and what we really are where we can operate in something in some kind of place of reasonable fulfillment, reasonable happiness, and reasonable survival. 
and I find myself particularly writing the marriage between Edward IV and Elizabeth Woodville. That is, was clearly a partnership that worked, and it worked in an extremely pragmatic way. And you know, they had both been brought up as landed gentry. You know, she'd been brought up as, a, as the wife of a knight, and he was a knight, roughly speaking. He was a bit grander than her. And so, how does that work? It obviously did work. And I wanted to portray a marriage that did work, despite these boundaries that we recognize. I am going to be writing a book about the Emperor Nero. And as odd as it sounds, uh, he really wanted to be free of all these constraints. He really wanted to do his acting and his poetry and his music and basically get out of the box of what was expected as an emperor. You think of the emperor as having all this power, but he didn't have power to be allowed to do what really he, he wanted to do. And then the same thing with Elizabeth I. She, she, in order to have as much freedom as she possibly could, which still isn't a lot, but she at least was able to say no to the marriage thing. Yeah. Um, and in order to do that, uh, and in order to be as independent as she could, she had to, to have the courage to say no to that one big thing that was really expected of her, realizing that, okay, there's not going to be an heir to the throne. I'm going to leave the succession actually in the hands of fate. So you're saying whatever is going to happen, it's more important to me to have my autonomy. Now I will not put myself under the rule of a man. I think for me, um, what interested me most was really Robert's story and Robert Bruce's story for the Insurrection Trilogy because um, the idea of, of independence for Scotland at that time really was, was not there. It was, it was born out of the, of the first um, Scottish um, Wars of Independence. Um, and Robert was very much at the heart of that and to a point where I find the question of, of, you know, do we think about independence the same way now as, as you would 700 years ago? Mm -hmm. and, and that's where I think it gets um, sort of a bit dangerous to hook modern notions of, of that onto mm -hmm. the past. And I, I was, was actually quite appalled when it was mooted first that um, the SNP wanted to have the referendum um, on the 700th anniversary of the Battle of Bannockburn, which, which completely, I mean, it's very clever from a, from a propaganda point of view and, and a sort of pulling of the heartstrings, but it, it, it totally whitewashes over the complexity of the original struggle. The struggle for Scotland's independence at that time, even though it was very much a sort of germ of an idea, um, was as much Robert's own sort of struggle for independence within his family um, who at that time were feudally tied to Edward I, which meant that when war broke out, he was supposed to be on the English side. Uh, um, I think there's at least a partial consensus emerging, isn't it, that, that the way to approach notions of freedom and equality and independence is actually through the individual, yeah. through the personal. Mm -hmm. and, and that's true whether, it's, whether we're talking about slavery or women, questions of race, true right the way around. Uh, sh should Scotland leave the United Kingdom? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, four or five, six, yeah. No. Yeah, fairly clear majority, yeah. but... I, so we don't get to vote. <laughs> I think it'll be closer than that on September 18th. Thanks so much. That's, uh, I mean, that's been moving and, uh, and well argued on so many levels, but um, thank you. Yeah.